Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. There's a rare occasion whereby we get to tear down a right holy terror made in none other than Windsor, Ontario, Canada. I hearken back to the French saying, Paris, ce n'est pas la France. Ottawa, by the same token, is not Canada. Coyote, killer, extraordinaire. I'm a live and let live kind of guy, but when they're all up in my hen house, something's got to be done. Safety is good, but the appearance of safety is gooder. Feed path is clear, barrel is clear. We're going to disassemble this and have a look at the machining and the componentry, the engineering, what went into the manufacturing of this brutally elegant piece of mechanical engineering. A rifle chambered in 5.56 millimeter NATO round, a projectile, you can't make this shit up, designed to pierce a US military helmet from World War II at 800 meters. And much to the delight of gun nerds, pedants, the lot of them, for generations to come, debate about an intractable abbreviation. It is a WSMCR. Starting at the butt end, we got the butt stock, a plastic glass fiber reinforced nylon 6.6. .6. Appear to be well made. The, the mold is in good shape. We have all replaceable componentry on the back end here with a shoulder bumper. Metric pan head Allen or hex head bolts. Everything appears beefy. You see this pin bore, uh, plastic in plastic, but the bore itself is quite stout. You're never gonna break that clean orf. That's got about yay many detents, depending on the disposition of your dirty dick beater in relation to your shoulder socket. You can adapt it around. The buffer tube is plastic, threaded in with a steel nut, uh, castellated nut, as well as staked in here, just with a punch pressed uh regular mild steel plate in here and we do have a metal bush in the back side so as not to get wallered out too quick that's nice this little guy up front here looks a little rather suspect you get that hung on something and peel that roll pin right out of there well this plastic buffer tube going into the upper receiver has been staked in well nutted and staked in place rather haphazardly, slapdashedly. You can see they, they missed on the one side there to actually hit the castellation, the locking castellation. Also, this is a this would be a phosphated, a black phosphate process on this mild steel right up against the aluminum, which is anodized. What you got here is a nice little corrosion cell. So any of the fasteners, of course, would rust, but also this would rust right to shit quick, fast, in a hurry as well. We'll split the upper and lower receivers. Of course, field stripping this requires no special tools. And that otter come out. Now this has a plate that has enabled them to uh, cheapen out on their, or just reduce the cost of machining. They put in two permanent plates, pressed and then fastened in place, apparently pressed into a dovetail, slid in, and then uh, affixed the lower receiver comprising the trigger group, the magazine well, and the handle and trigger guard. I might need to do something like so. Or, oh, here we go. As you can see, this is a fairly new firearm to me. And the guide rods, springs come fling and flagging out at you. One of the things off the hop here you can see from the out is this brass deflector is made out of plastic. Uh, appears to be some sort of Delarin material. Why they wouldn't make it that out of aluminum, I don't know. This is as far down as you'd need to go for field stripping it just to clean it out at the, at the range. Uh, we might need a, a little copper hammer to get, I'm <laughs> uh, Of course, this is based on the AR uh, assault rifle. <laughs> Yeah, it's been nice knowing you. AR is actually Armalite, not assault rifle, but uh, it is a semi-fully automatic 
uh, rifle, which makes it not only black, but incredibly scary. My kingdom for a puck. The only Canadian in history doesn't have a puck handy. Now there's very little difference between a craptacular, cheaply made firearm and a very well made firearm. You got a crappy one, you apply the rapid onset lead poisoner and eight times out of 10, it's gonna go bang. However, with a good firearm, 99 times out of 100, it's gonna go bang. And the devil is in the details. All of the takedown pins are caged. You can't lose them. Fit and finish wise of a firearm, you can sandblast or, or punch press out of sheet metal components. But if you want to get into that real nice trigger feel and the nice uh, reliable feeling, the costs grow exponentially because the surface finishes need to get more and more fine and the tolerancing gets more and more fine. Also, the, just the good, smart ideas get more and more expensive. Case in point, this retention pin here, this little pin, takedown pin. What you could do if you were a command economy just required to make a bazillion of these, as the former Soviet Union, for instance, you'd make all these parts out of pressed metal and the pins would just be uh, uh, essentially a nail and then lopped off. Maybe if you were feeling fancy, you could put the hot metal glue gun on there and, and put a, a little bit of a shoulder on there, zap, zap. But in this case, we see the expense that they've gone through to make this a nice and thoughtful uh, device. So the pin itself turned on the OD with a nice cap, rounded over, and then this huge additional expense milled out a slot in order to index in a hole in the upper receiver in a hole that a pin goes into a ground pin goes into so that for the sole purpose that this pin gets caged they's also they's also put in hey getting a tongue tangulated here i'm so excited by this tiny little pin the details the details Huh? You see that? I put a little divot in there so you can put your bullet in there to push the pin out. Brilliant. It turns out I was mistaken. This is aluminum, this buffer tube, a sateen finish, so abrasive slurry, uh, you know, mixed around in those little trichoidal abrasive slurry bits, giving it a sateen finish. I don't believe it was soda blasted or bead blasted. The outward corners have more wear, more abrasion to them. If you'd focus, you f fuck. No, not gonna do it. Doesn't like it. I don't know. I don't know. it then the inside corners here, quite a bit sharper, prominent on the uh, shadowed side. Likely the uh, abrasive media couldn't get in there. Nice finish though, fooled me. Now they had to, in order to get this socket in here for the ease of manufacturing, and you look at that fastener, that's the retention fastener, YFS brand, that's a fang chien, chien, yeah, the fang of a, of a dog. Those are Taiwanese. Uh, so a good, good, very likely very good quality fastener, but they had to, as I was saying, manufacture this in two components for ease of manufacturing for this socket of the buffer tube. And if you look, I bet you this is a 30 millimeter, it'll likely be 27 or something on the minor diameter, 28 and a half. That makes this 30. That makes the, yeah, look at that. That makes this very prone to cracking under duress because there's absolutely fuck all for meat there. Not very deep and not very steep either. You have a look at that. I bet you if we check the OD of that, 31 point, so I don't know what that is in human readable units, but let's look at the difference here. You get 60 thou in the difference. 
divided by two, 30 thou of meat. That's what they would call fuck all in a big ship. You can see the ground, not polished, but ground, nicely, nicely ground surface. And the mating surface on the sear is nicely ground. Trigger pull for a factory trigger is very crisp. You can always get nicer. That's the beauty about this style. They have all kinds of upgrade kits and uh, it's nothing for somebody to go along and, and take an afternoon and polish that right up. I've been known to waste an afternoon polishing up my hammer as well. Into the lower, the Glocka magazine well. You see the mechanism there. The machining of this, I don't know if it's done in house or subbed or offshore or what, but they've allowed the machine tool time to do its work. They're not pushing anything. You see this long, thin cross section, very apt to uh, rattle trappery, especially with the long, thin dingus end flapping in the breeze. Takes some time to get the parameters right, to get the surface finishes right, and these guys have taken that time. It's a beautiful, look at this little slot here, just a wee tiny one dingle dangling out in the air it's not easy to do that kind of feature however they have not deburred anything internally this has not go, gone through a uh, abrasive either blasting or kind of media tumbling we can see the cross drilling here for the handle you shave with that mofo also where the hammer strikes where the hammer ends its throw it's starting to mushroom over this aluminum. And we can see we are getting quite a lip there after near but uh, 200 rounds cycle through it. So if I were you, and I'm not, but I'm me, I would preemptively just chamfer that down a little bit to prevent the chip from uh, getting on towards and getting caught up in the clockworks, preventing a uh, the thing from going bang when you need it to. Of course, because it's aluminum, you can just do it with any old knife what you got handy. There's the main part of the trigger group. Of course, the safety with its flat on there. A nice little pin machined out of a solid chunk of steel. And then the J hammer and trigger and sear along with its mating surface on the hammer. All ground, almost polished. Another cute little feature speaking to the eye for detail. This is just a simple press punch part out of a, a piece of sheet metal. They punch it out and then they form it into shape. Somebody's gone in after the fact, as witnessed by the greasy thumbprint here somewhere. Joe left his mark, but <laughs> went in after the fact and taken that burr off with an abrasive, uh, probably a belt, very likely a belt. Nice little touch. Of course, this is starting to get a little beat up, this catchment already, and that goes in the last round. Let's see which way goes towards the bad guy, like that. When that last round comes up and hits, that actuates this upwards and when the bolt comes back and over that slide it gets hooked up. Consequently, philosophers for thousands of years have wondered about the nature of good and evil and here we have it in the flesh, a simple aluminum rivet separating good guys from bad guys. One aluminum rivet. Who'd have thunk that it'd be so absurd? Either uh, somebody got on there 200 pound gorilla got on these itty bitty titty four millimeter flathead screws, or maybe they're using cheap labor out of the local high school. Tighten in the ever living fuck right out of those. You can tell on account of the hex being chowdered right to hell. I do no doubt painfully aware, but <laughs> it's easy to see from a million miles away is you need to rotate the bolt uh, rotation pin in order to index it with a slot in the body so you can get the get the bolt carrier group out now this is a lugged rotary bolt the hammer itself has a nice big target for hitting and all it's doing is pushing that firing pin 
out just a tiny little nib in order to make it go bang. Let me, let me show you that. Just like that. And this gun has been fired as witnessed by a surplus of brass everywhere. It's, so the bolt goes in and gets indexed, locks in place in order to seal up the breech, all those gases. And then the gases actually operate the bolt to and fro and rotation wise. So the projectile comes down the barrel until it hits these ports, these gas ports in the gas block. And that gas block, that gas gets used to extend a piston again in here. And you can see it's witness mark what it's been striking on. And of course this bolt slides on the sliders like so. A piston pushes everything back, ejects this round, it gets looped into that little claw there, and that brings the brass out. And then on the forward stroke, it peels off another round out of the glockazine, brings it into the barrel, uh, indexes with the breech, and then locks it in place with this little rotary motion, and then you're ready to fire another round. One thing I do not like about this, uh, this is more prone, say, than a uh, SKS or a, an AK, a different kind of system. Those don't have the rotary blocks, and this is arguably more prone to fouling. One well, of the features you see on the bolt, what you don't see on the early SKS uh, Soviet automagic rifles, is this little piton here, this pistone. What adds to the ejection effect. So we're, we're hooked in the claw on this little lip here, but it's also wanting to buck this off. This is under spring tension. It's held in place, of course, by everything being locked up. And then when it opens up, this allows that to, to pop out more easy. Some say that this is more prone to fouling due to the ingress of dirt and schmoo and so forth. But it might just be that it's manufactured with tighter tolerances and doesn't allow for uh, as much schmoo to be in there. Which, depending on your theater, is either a good or a bad thing. However, tighter tolerances mean tighter tolerances. It shoots more better. We're going to get into the gas system, but first we've got to get off this handguard. Tacticool handguard. This is goofier as frig. Uh, proud, they couldn't, well, you, what you could do is make this five millimeter shorter. Of course, the bolts come in five millimeter increments generally, or you could machine them down. So machine this shoulder a little bit deeper. That way these aren't protruding near as much. And you can go with a shorter bolt that runs flush. And also, I don't know what is with this little plastique washer. A goofier's frig. Maybe they need it there in order to get that 50 millimeters of, uh, 50 rather, inch pounds of torque that they require in order to set this and not, I think they're worried about uh, bending something in there. So that's that squish washer. No other reason for it but to keep it from uh, warranty calls from 200 pound gorillas. Here's the gas block here. You see that this hardened pin moves but an inch, whilst the uh, charge itself, it's trying to cycle, is 56, uh, two, two inches. Fair bit of uh, gravity in this here block. This rod's gotta be hardened because it's whacking this real good in order to th get this to shoot back enough, store some energy in these springs, and then peel off another round out of the magazine here. Uh, that, that, that little inch, that's providing a hell of a lot of power. And that gas actuated uh, piss, spring return, piss, that rod goes through the upper. There's a bronze bush there that it rides in. It uh, need to be lubricated. Of course, you get a hard pin through something soft and the soft part wallers out. Different, must be a different crew or a different sub making these. What would you call that? Where the, well, the barrel nut. You can see they come in on a turning center with 
a, uh, a live milling machine cutter and instead of trochoidal or uh, slot clearing, a nice little clean routine, they're just plunging down in the material and then whopping one slot and then whopping another slot and you can see you're not getting a surface finish what is uh, indicated in the rest of the firearm. This has got to be a different crew or a different programmer at least. You see that all the way around. Big, uh, big chowdery cutter mark in there, which we haven't, it was surprising to me because they've really done a nice job on the machining on this otherwise. I remember when Oma and Opa Bumblefuck sat you down and explained to you about Sinterklaas this, I am not the masterful filmmaker, what I make myself out. Oh, sure, we got uh, storyboarders, waterboarders, a team of writers, prudence in safety, that uh, check in HR with the open toed shoes. I generally, location scouts, I like to blame the help, but in this case, the beauty of the Empire of Dirt is we get a wide diaspora of technical people enjoying uh, taking shit apart. And there is some rarefied air there. And some of those guys are audio tomfoolerers. Don't like the clicks and the whistles in their monitors. Destroys them. They get right uh, all kinds of knickers knotted over that. And the audio on my lapel mic was bloody atrocious. Clicking and a banging. I'm not sure what, I think I, I, as simple as just buttoning up an extra button probably would have done her, but we missed out on all the high caliber gun puns. It does trigger some, but they, you know, you look at the Venn diagram of, of uh, dirty hander types and audio tomfoolery, that's a pretty rarefied little sliver there, just about as rarefied as war criminals who have received the Nobel Peace Prize. I can only think of but two. Uh, they both are Americans. For well, One for uh, carpet bombing in Laos and the other for uh, drone striking. But that's neither here nor there. Duly elected officials in other countries. I'm actually not a lizard person gleefully hiding behind my COVID mask so I can munch on rabbits freely. I am... <laughs> <laughs> just a bumblefuck in his garage so never mind the mess you get used to the smell roasted uh what you call it brussels sprouts no big deal <laughs> the buttstock aluminum i think i told you i was uh i thought i was wrong but it turns out i was mistaken that happened once to me in the 80s as well turns out we were all high on cocaine but this buttstock good for fuck all it doesn't do fuck all but you can hold your weed in it, and it also makes it illegal in California. These butt stocks, known by the state of cancer to cause California, are plainly evil, and uh, you can't have them. Also, I've uh, learned that you cannot have a pistol grip on what <laughs> it has to have this uh, goofy looking wing just to uh, reduce the tactical appearance and make it far less lethal apparently i don't <laughs> americans i mean their second amendment is a, a thing of beauty or a thing of horror depending on which side of the uh, disposition you, you you look at but there are some byzantine and obscure rules no different than any other kind of it's almost like they they want to make it as difficult as possible to, to for a grown-ass man <laughs> to possess these I don't know, that's just what it seems like as a grown-ass man. This Picatinny rail here, this rail, this is actually put on, affixed after the fact, and it looks like it's pinned, and then the welder's secret weapon, silicon kernied in place with Pantone matching silicon kerny, so you don't notice it's been affixed in place with an adhesive and maybe some pins. I went over this. Handguard, uh, goofier's frig. In future iterations, so this, I will tell you, this is a fantastically fun little uh, banger. A 10 out of 10, I would bang this on a Saturday afternoon all day long. You know, <laughs> this is super fun, but there are some janky, weird little things that uh, need to be corrected in future iterations. 
such as don't torque the ever living fuck out of these even though these side plates they don't got to come off it doesn't mean that the fasteners don't got to come off they also did all the anodizing and all the surfacing parkerizing etc uh, prior to machining the <coughs> pardon me covid when you cough or sneeze or sniff be quick young man with your handkerchief apparently you don't need to because you wear a mask and all you need to do is pull the mask down and spray everywhere and then put the mask back on and you're magically safe or <laughs> security theater i tell you what okay the end of the barrel was machined after the surface finishing and it is if you'd focus you fuck just just please 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 do it do it for the giffer the gipper Arthur Miller's death of a salesman in Simpson form. Do it for him. You're not going to do it. <sighs> I got to go with the Mexican focus here. Manuel. You see the end of the barrel has been machined. Two meters. No. Infinite. No. The other way. T'other way. T'other way. There we go. That's about 20 millimeters. You can see on the crown of that barrel. That's where the rifling ends. The end of the barrel has been machined. It's raw steel and it's rusting. So that affixes the flash hider. You can't call that an arrester because you get arrested, but it is just a flash hider. And that's rusting all the shit already. So that sat somewhere kind of half assed moist uh, while it was prior to it getting assembled. And there you go. A fun, fantastically fun little tack shooter. Oh, God, I got a self sensor on that. T A C K, not T A X. They don't actually have to censor you. Just the threat of censure is enough to send anybody fleeing for uh, a knock at the door at midnight. Made in Canada by Canadurpians, a fine piece of engineering with. Just a couple of little ugly bits. But the thing is, the really beautiful ladies are the ones what's got a couple flaws. You know, something you can, you can fix. Because if it's absolutely perfect, uh, you got nothing to complain about. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.